I started off by looking at Lamborghini sales, and they are definitely up. A lot of it's got to do with the uh, electric Lamborghini. So Lamborghini company is owned by Audi. I mean, parent company is VW, but the Audi group manages Lamborghini, Audi, of course, Bentley, and Ducati, the motorcycles. So you've got the four parts of, of the Audi group. Uh, yeah, basically, they do separate financials. So interesting to see how so many companies are dropping in value. And yes, I'm looking at the first half of 2024. I believe the Audi releases their next set of financials in a few days as I'm recording this. Uh, no, I don't know, about the 1st of November, maybe the 2nd. Uh, I'm not keeping track of my days very well. Um, so Lamborghini is one of the few car companies that has increased production but they are one of the companies that has stuck the closest to the roots. So that's, that's probably why. Um, it, uh, the uh, new electric Lamborghini, uh, 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 we'll see. Supposedly those are sold out for until uh, 2026, but I'm curious to see if that holds. We'd seen with the Cybertruck where everybody reserved one and then when they figured out they can't uh, buy it and uh, flip it for double the money. They said they don't want it anymore. So that uh, definitely skewed the numbers. So my understanding is you can uh, get a Cybertruck about as fast as you want. So possibly this uh, electric Lamborghini is going to be a similar situation. Although I think the uh, average Lamborghini customer is a little more well-to-do than the average pretty much anything else customer. Well, I think Rolls Royce is in the same group, but uh, you're going to spend some money. So Ducati did basically the same. So motorcycle sales have been stronger than car sales in a lot of segments. The, I, I think it's the price point. You more likely to afford a motorcycle, uh, Ducati at a little upper end. So it's more of an aspirational thing. It's not, uh, it, it's not something you're replacing to run your kids to soccer practice. Where like Audi, they're trying to ride the trends they're making these little SUVs and they're just trying to stay hip with everybody, which is very difficult for a car company. You have the uh, car lots, or the you know new car lots, placing orders, trying to get stuff in based on what's selling basically that week. And you know there's a shortage, so they order a little heavier. Then all of a sudden they've ordered a whole bunch and you're finally uh, making vehicles and you send them what they ordered and they're like, oh wait, hold it. Stuff changed. I don't need these anymore. Yeah, it's kind of dodgy seeing as people are like, oh, wait, or yeah, dealers are like, oh, wait. I know we ordered all these, but uh, yeah, we don't need these. They're not going to sell. Um, Bentley definitely dropped their production or their sales. But Bentley's kind of betting on that, uh, what is it, the, the Bentega? So they're betting on the sales of a large SUV. So that's kind of the uh, story of many of the automakers right now is they have all their eggs in one basket and it's a large SUV, which I mean, yeah, it's, it's nice to have space to throw your stuff in there, but it's expensive and do you really need that much vehicle? And how often do you need to replace it? Modern cars are far more reliable than older cars not to launch in too much of a stories, but I remember being in junkyards as a kid and basically all the cars had less than 100,000 miles on the odometer. If your car had 100,000 miles, it was like this magical thing. And now, uh, yeah, I mean, probably not put 100,000 miles in your Lamborghini, but uh, average vehicle, you know, your grocery getter cars are going to uh, get some uh, real miles on them. Now it is more of a grocery getter than a Bentley or a Lamborghini is, that's for sure. So I think that's why Audi is closer in this category. It's closer to like a every man's vehicle. Uh, somewhere here I had the profit of Audi. And of course I'm scrolling around and I lose my uh, place. But Audi has definitely dropped their profitability for uh, this is comparing 
2023, first half of 2023, the first half of 2024, just for uh, apples to apples. Uh, net liquidity, total assets, too much of a profit statement. Yeah, I think this has a number. So basically operating profit after results. So they've dropped uh, basically 42%. So they're still, you know, creeping close to 2 billion in profit for the first half, but not quite what they had uh, been used to. I, I did pull up Stellantis numbers for the same period, just since we've all been uh, laughing at Stellantis for uh, in the US market putting all their eggs in one basket that uh, you had to have a uh, top of the line pickup that gets horrible reliability scores and uh, you had to have the fastest largest engine car that uh, I think their engines are pretty good but there's there's in my experience there's been some electrical issues um, so I mean yeah okay I'd be okay at the charger but uh, Raw reliability isn't necessarily there compared to some of the other brands. Um, and on Slantis, I guess if I had to say something, I'd be like, hey, look, they cut their tax expense 50%. But uh, it, not as good. So they went from uh, 10 billion profit last year to 5 billion profit. So they're, I mean, they're not hurting, hurting. Slantis has got a lot of good brands. Uh, not necessarily in the U.S. market, but they've got a lot of a lot of good brands. Uh, Peugeot used to be in the U.S. market. Um, I, I you know if I was Slantis, I think I'd be bringing Vauxhall to the U.S. market. Vauxhall is a really big seller. They brought Vauxhall in. I, I think they could basically destroy the used car market because those are a little more of an economy vehicle, and uh, I think they could sell a ton. But for now, they're just pushing pickups and Jeeps for you know, double what they were a few years back. But the Lamborghini sales are up, but that's based on the uh, electric Lamborghini. So in their sales aren't up by much. So they're up 4%. So 2023, they had 5,341 and 2024, 5,558. So what we are waiting to see is is that electric vehicle sales gonna hold. So when we get the next numbers out of Lamborghini, the numbers will tell us, you know, how that uh, how that electric vehicle is doing, if it's holding. I just can't imagine the way sales have been going that we're gonna see, your electric vehicle sales have been going, that we're gonna see a big uptick in the uh, electric uh, Lamborghini sales because I mean, Lamborghini is such a traditional vehicle, and the electric thing really isn't. Yeah, the electric engines are fast. I, I mean, you can really take off. You can really get to speed. I mean, look at like what Tesla Plaid has done for us, or what it has shown us. So there's definitely some uh, some benefits there to a faster vehicle. And I, I mean, that's what Lamborghini is about: is getting your speed up. Wow. I mean, it's a, it's a nice, definitely a nice vehicle. Yeah, deliveries to customers. I mean, Ducati is just crazy number. Uh, Audi, obviously, too, but I mean, you've seen Audi everywhere. I don't know if I've ever seen a Ducati. I think I've seen, like, one. But it's a nice way to round out that, uh, you know, the Audi group, it keeps it more stable, having that cycle brand in there. So you're, you've kind of got an up when everything else is down. Although I, with interest rates, we've seen everything down a little bit. Oh, here's one of the things I was looking for. So here in uh, Bentley, uh, sales by model. So it's production, deliveries to customers. I think deliveries to customers is a little more important. But that's definitely Definitely a change, so they're down. Oh, if I didn't look at it, what fifteen hundred? 
for 22%. So Bentley doesn't sell that many vehicles. It's, a, it's an upper end brand. So they're not selling quite as many as some of the other ones. Yeah, look at the Bentayga's down 25%. But Continental, I mean, that's still respectable. Um, 1800 the difference before 3,000 Bentayga's to 2,300 Continental's and the Flying Spur. I mean, still over 1,000. And that's basically a bespoke vehicle. So, I mean, it's it's high end. You know, if you're if you're basically hand making a vehicle, does it really matter? I mean, yeah, it matters that you sell enough to get your profits, but it, it's not like you're running a traditional production line, you know, kicking out uh, I don't know Chevy Malibus or something. I mean, that's a little different when your sales drop. You're you're running a full production line, and you've got to wonder if that car should be continued. Uh, and this is the numbers like the uh, 2023, the Rivalto. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. Rivalto, I believe. Um, 52, and then it's up to 936. So that's definitely a, a big, a big buffer there. So basically, the, the, the numbers are up. The sales are up. Well, that's production, but I mean, sales are also up. Although not as much as production. So they must be building some inventory. But they, uh, the, the news I'm seeing is that the uh, Rivalto is, you know, all of them that are being produced are spoken for. But that's not necessarily what these numbers show. That makes it look like we're, because 355 delivered 936 built. So that really makes it look like we're building inventory. So the new numbers that come out uh, later this week will give us a better idea. But if you're looking for a Lamborghini, which I wish I was, at least I wish it was in my budget, uh, now is probably the time because they're building some inventory. I'd build a swinging Audi, but that would probably be about it. My old Jetta's got some miles on it, and the Audi's got a little nicer trim. But that is what I have for the uh, numbers on Audi Group. I think it's interesting to see which vehicles are selling, which vehicles are more profitable, and of course how Stellantis save 50% on taxes by uh, taking a bath on sales. But uh, that's all I got for now. Thank you.